Hello everybody. For this section, we are going to be talking about mineral characteristics. First things first, we're going to talk about luster. So this is how the mineral reflects light. And there's two that we're going to be talking about this, metallic and non-metallic. Either it reflects light the way that a metal does. You imagine like taking a spoon out of your silverware drawer and holding it up to sunlight. That is metallic luster, the way that it reflects it. Or everything over here, everything from glassy, like reflecting the way that glass does, to earthy, the way that like dirt, soil would reflect light. All of this, which we're just going to call non-metallic for now. So either it shines like a metal or it doesn't. We can also talk about cleavage. I know you guys have been waiting for this. We're talking about the ability of a mineral to break along preferred planes. So this is not related to the shape that the mineral has as it forms, but the shape that it takes whenever it breaks. Does it break you know, randomly, break like glass shattering, or when it breaks, does it break along these straight lines or form 90 degree angles, right? You can have something which flakes off like this and comes off in sheets, something which has a couple directions that it'll break at, making these angles, or breaking off into little cubes, forming 90 degree angles, or even rhombuses like this. This slide gives you an overview of some of the more interesting shapes that it can take. Believe it or not, yes, smashing some minerals open will form something like octahedrons or dodecahedrons. Very, very unusual characteristic shapes for these. We can also talk about hardness. So this is a mineral's ability to resist being scratched. So this is not necessarily an indication of mineral strength in a structural sense. That you know, Something like diamond, if you put it on a wooden table and you hit it with a hammer, it will break very, very easily. But down here, our maximum hardness diamond, if you put it on the tip of a drill, it will be able to cut into anything that you want to cut into. It can scratch any material that it wants to scratch. And this is our Mohs hardness scale here. Uh, from 1 to 10, everything from talc, which is so soft that it, you know, you don't even have to use your nail. You just sort of run it between your fingers almost, and it breaks off. It's like baby powder to things that are more like fingernail hardness to copper hardness, things here in the middle, stuff like appetite, which is a lot of what your teeth are made out of, a little bit above that, things like most knives and glass to steel and to things which are really, really super tough. A lot of times when we have a mineral, we can figure out the hardness of it by scratching it against a grass plate, a glass plate, that's what we're seeing here. So this person is taking this mineral sample here of some unknown mineral and seeing, does it scratch the glass? Well, it looks like it does or not. So then, because it does scratch the glass, we know that it has to be above this on the scale. And we can use this, along with other mineral properties, to start narrowing down to one, two, or very few possible minerals that it could be. We can also talk about streak. So this is a little white ceramic plate here. And when we take some mineral sample like this and scrape it against the plate, you see that it leaves behind this bright red sort of streak. Even though it's not really a bright red sample, you get a different color than what you're looking at for the mineral specifically. This can help tremendously for being able to identify different things. And finally, we have the color of the mineral itself. And while this is sometimes what we would go to first to be able to identify different minerals, it's really the least reliable indicator. There are a ton of different colors that a mineral can take. For example, uh, all of these right here, everything from purple, kind of a, a muddy gray color almost, clear, yellow, right? these are all the exact same mineral here. You see this one has multiple colors all within the exact same sample. Right? So you know, you'd be tempted to think, oh, well, this is one mineral here, and this is a different mineral here, and a different one over here. It's not true. They're different colors. They're all the same mineral. And the same over here. These, I believe, are the exact same mineral as what's going on over here. They just have a different coloration. Uh, finally, you can have something like 
fluorescence. So whenever it is hit with ultraviolet light, really, really short wavelength, high energy light, it spits off some other sort of light in return, right? It's glow in the dark whenever exposed to UV lights. And you can also have some unusual characteristics, the, the minor players, but these can be cool, like fire fringes. So this right here is calcite. Whenever light passes through calcite, it gets split into two streams, essentially. So the light that's coming up from this text here travels through the mineral and gets displaced into two places. This is very unusual, and this is also something that we can use to diagnose which mineral we might be looking at here. You can have magnetism, right? Is this attracted to a magnet? You can have an acid reaction. So if I take a little bit of acid and I drop it on the sample, does it react and bubble up and start to release a gas or smell different or something? Or does you put it on it and nothing happens at all, like dropping acid onto a little bit of glass or something? And finally, you would have a taste. So this is not permission for you to go around licking things for science. That's on you. Uh, but there are a few minerals, for example, halite, like salt, which has a very distinct taste to it. And this can be diagnostic in certain situations. Now, usually when I include these videos at the end of the lecture, these are optional. I would really strongly encourage you to watch this one here. It is somebody giving you guys uh, a little bit of review of what I've just talked about, but with actual minerals, all right? So the first two numbers in the access code are seven zero, and this person has actual minerals and real footage of them looking at these different characteristics with actual samples and performing some of these tests. It is maybe more valuable than just seeing the slides and getting able to see the actual rocks and minerals excuse me, involved. Next, we're going to talk about the rock cycle.